Hello, this is Matthew Miller from the ZDNet Smartphones and Cell Phones blog. So a couple months ago I bought my HTC Evo 4G on Sprint. It was my move back to Sprint after a year or so. Thinking that it was the best Android device I would ever have, at least for the next few months. Well, along comes, just a couple months later, Samsung bringing their Galaxy S phones to all of the carriers. And so now we have the Samsung Epic 4G to compete with the Evo 4G on Sprint as the uh, leading Android phone. Now I'm going to take you on a uh, just a quick uh, first look with some of my first impressions uh, for using this for the past uh, I guess four days now and what I think about it compared to my Evo 4G. As you can see side by side they are kind of similar in, in height. The um, Evo 4G is slightly thinner than the Epic 4G, mainly because of the keyboard that we'll see in a second. Um, as I said, the height's about the same. The width, the Evo, the Evo is wider than the Epic 4G. On the back, we can see there's a, there's a camera on both. One's 8 megapixel, one's 5, a dual LED and a single LED. Um, and some other hardware differences such as the kickstand um, and HDMI port on the Evo 4G. So there are actually several reasons and I'll write it up in my post of why I, I personally still find the Evo 4G to be the better device. I was expecting to sell that and get the, the Samsung Vibrant right away um, or the Samsung Epic 4G right away however after further looking at it even in this even in these just four days, I've decided that I'm going to keep the Evo 4G. Now, one thing that you see here is there's a difference in screen size. We have a 4.3 inch um, LCD on the right and a 4 inch uh, Super AMOLED display. Uh, the colors, as you can see, pop more on the Samsung Epic 4G, and they're a little bit more washed out on the on the Evo. However, they they are both good screens, and I'm I'm more pleased with the larger display on the Evo at this time. So let's go back to the Epic 4G and take a walk around. Now this is the uh, the third released Epic or uh, Galaxy S device. We have not seen any more news about the uh, Samsung Fascinate that's coming to Verizon. So we have the the T-Mobile Vibrant, we have the Samsung Captivate on AT&T, and now we have the Epic 4G on Sprint. This will be coming on uh, August 31st actually. So it has the same things we've seen in the Galaxy S. We've got the 1 gigahertz Cortex-8 Hummingbird processor. We've got uh, the 4 inch 800 by 480 Super AMOLED display. We've got the Samsung TouchWiz 3, as you can see here, their typical launcher. Um, pretty much everything that you expect, you know, the five megapixel camera. However, there are a couple differences. One thing is the camera. We now see that this device actually has a flash, an LED or a, yeah, LED flash on the back. We also see this one, much like the European counterparts, has a front-facing camera. So you can do uh, video conferencing with it with um, quick. We also see that this one has a WiMAX radio inside and it has, uh, the other ones all have 16 gigabytes of internal flash and a micro SD card. This one only has a 1 gigabyte included uh, memory and a 16 gigabyte card is included with support up to 32 gigs on the micro SD. So it's a bit different on the, on the internal memory. Major difference of course is this, right? The slide out QWERTY keyboard. And as you can see, it's, it's huge. I mean this is a, you see a 5 row keyboard with uh, the 4 program buttons on the side, 2 on this side, 2 on this side. You see it has a smiley key. Uh, dedicated period, nice size space. We have directional buttons over here. I personally like the color screen, like the color scheme. I like the backlighting. I love the tactile feel. I mean, as you press on a button, you can definitely, you know, feel the. Uh, you can definitely feel the feedback. It's very nice feedback on there. Um, the function and shift are a little bit differently spaced. Um, there's only one shift key on the left. Uh, there's no tactile feel, I mean, uh, on the surface of the keys, right? Um, so there's no no real texture to it, I guess it is. 
so you do have to actually look at it but I, I found it to be quite a nice keyboard I mean it's well spaced for both my thumbs it fits quite well um, what you see here on the on the four application icons if you tap on applications before you on the other um, the vibrant and the captivate you could hold you could tap this and actually customize these two middle icons on this device you can't customize any of that um, so these just come up in here and they're all alphabetical or you can tap uh, a list view and show them alphabetical that way. It's either a grid or a list. There's no other customization. I believe if you tap and hold, it just goes right back to the, the home screen there. So they're all alphabetically organized. And as you can see, there's uh, there's not much loaded on here. I mean, it's the typical Galaxy S stuff with the all share, which is the, um, oh, escapes me now, uh, DLNA uh, sharing ability, you know, with the application. We've got uh, Amazon MP3 store, Google Maps of course, um, and then we've got a few Sprint things. Sprint Football, Sprint Hotspot, Sprint Navigation, NASCAR, Sprint Cup Mobile, um, Sprint TV, so free Sprint stuff, um, but no, no real junkware on there. And Think Free Office is the, um, is the Office Viewer that's included file browser and then the media hub which of course is still not launched however I believe it's supposed to be launched uh, around the 31st around the time that this device actually launches so so far I've been uh, pretty pleased with it I mean um, it's been fast um, I have had issues with uh, with Google Maps uh, let me see Wi-Fi network why is it not can we reconnect it already has before let's refine that again One th one thing on the hardware, one last thing, is, is down here, um, you see these icons, it's all flush screen, and after a few seconds they will actually disappear. Um, so you have to kind of remember uh, the order of the icons. On um, this device it's menu, home, back, and search. Some devices have home, menu, so you, you without seeing those you actually have to kind of you touch and then hope you hit the right one, so you got to kind of remember those a little bit. Um, I have had issues with Google Maps on this device uh, from time to time, well most of the time, it was never getting me a fix. Um, granted sometimes I may not have had the best window view but when I was in the car three times it, it just couldn't find my location. Um, see now I'm indoors and, and it's, it's searching, searching. If I pop up my Evo here Let's see how it does because the Evo has been really good for maps and GPS. Let's see what it does. And see, it's able to get me right where I am. My Evo immediately picks me up where I am. Whereas the, um, I'm finding the Epic 4G is not that good for GPS uh, navigation. And I don't think it suffers from the exact same problem as the other Galaxy S because at times it does get perfectly. But uh, we'll see. Well, there it goes now. So. I want to show you my location. So it's 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 finding it. It's just uh, having some issues at times, I guess. And then once it did, Seismic kept on giving me a forest close. So I've had some weird behaviors off and on with the Epic 4G. It hasn't been completely perfect. But it does feel very nice in your hand. Um, and it is quite a nice device. It's going to be a tough choice for people. It pretty much comes down to, I would say, do you need a physical QWERTY keyboard or not? And if you don't, my, my opinion, the Evo is still the better device. You know, I, I have a tough time giving up my kickstand, and uh, and I actually do find the HDMI port to be useful when we when we go places to share videos and um, and pictures with people that I take. So let's continue around the hardware. Uh, let's see, over on the right side we have the power button and a physical camera button, which is great to have. Nothing on the bottom. On the left we just have the volume uh, button there, and then a lanyard opening. On the top, we have the 3.5mm headset jack and the micro USB. And what I love about these Galaxy S's is they have this slider door, so you just slide it closed and protect that uh, micro USB port, which is great. And then the back is really nice on the uh, on the Epic 4G. We have this soft touch with uh, kind of a, um, a pearl-esque um, finish to it, where you can see some sparkles of silver within the black. Uh, I guess it matches that Galaxy S. Uh, design. Um, then you see the flashes in the middle with a camera above it. It's a well-designed phone. I mean, it's it's fairly simple, um, but it feels feels good in your hand. It's not quite as uh, heavy feeling, dense feeling, I guess, as the Evo. Um, 
beautiful display as I said and uh, wonderful keyboard so it's a tough choice it's uh, $50 more than the Evo I post some of the detailed thoughts about uh, the differences that I find in it so thanks for watching I appreciate it